Okay, welcome. We're going to draw the Union Jack in Adobe Illustrator. So I'm going to draw it as a vector. First of all, any flag, anything I want to create, it's an existing asset, um, product, whatever. I'm going to research. I'm going to look at how it goes together, what I need to, to do to create a, a, a um, accurate representation of something. So first of all, I'm going to do the old Google. I'm going to get onto Google. And I'm going to look for information. There may be multiple sources. I'm going to narrow it down. This is a very clear and useful um, document I found. Okay, things I'd be looking for are the overall uh, size of the flag. So um, I've got my scale there, 36 by 18 inches. I've got others too. The ratio should be the same. I've got proportions here all labeled the width there um, these stripes obviously the blue is just in the background and also very useful to me the color values now I'm going to move into Illustrator and show you how I would go about putting this together and I'll refer back to this document as we go so good tip for you you're starting to design you want to get as much reference material as you can Okay, I've loaded up Illustrator, I've started a new document, and this time I made my document in inches, and I wouldn't normally do that, but all my initial reference sizes are in inches, and I thought it, it's really just the ratios and proportions I'm working with anyway, so it really doesn't matter what the scale I use is, or the measurements. It's a vector drawing. It'll scale up and down anyway and go into any document. So I'm gonna escape out of that. Now, a couple of little things I might want to do. Um, I might wanna start off and just get a couple of little uh, swatches of my colors. So I'm gonna make two little squares here with, without any stroke. I'll duplicate that by holding down the Alt key. There's three colors in the Union Jack but one of them is uh, white. I don't really need to draw a white one up. I know what the values for white are. And if I look down the bottom of my document, I've got the RGB values. And here is where I can find the RGB. I'll go through that again. Select the object, come over here to the fill, double click. Now let's put in those RGB values. Um, this one has a zero amount of red. So obviously it's going to be the blue, 33 green and 115 blue RGB and that gives me my royal blue this one will be the red for sure so how much red hat does it have in it not full it's got 198 it's got 16 green and 24 blue and that gives me my red okay okay the order I do things in is just preference for me. You might go in some other different orders, but the overall techniques what I'm going to use is something I would like you to have a go with. I'm going to start with drawing the rectangle blue um, because the blue was the last selected. Let's have a look if I draw it over there. Cornered, kind of try to be very specific when you drag it. Okay, so I'll do that again. I've clicked on rectangle I can see those pinky purple lines telling me intersection with two lines join and I'm going to left button drag down until I get the intersection over here corner to corner I could double check up here and see that it was 36 inches and not you know just under like that okay it looks good um, if I clicked on the top corner this little anchor point I would see it starts in zero zero that's really useful and um, some cases I might lock that I won't lock it at the moment I will take my line and I'm going to draw the two ones across here and, and maybe I'll do them in white okay anyway doesn't matter I'm going to go to my line and from the anchor point to the anchor point corner to corner I'm going to draw a line and draw another line there and I'm going to select them both by holding down the shift key. 
Now, I know that this line is going to be 3.6 inches thick because I've checked my specifications. And A is one fifth, one fifth of this length here. Okay, so divide that into five, and that's what it's going to be. That's 18 inches, so it's 18 divided by five. Uh, easy, I can do that in my head. Used a calculator, it's 3.6 inch. So I'm going to come over here to stroke and type in 3.6. Now I'm usually in millimeters, that's what I work in. So I'm going to make sure I'm going to force it and type in the little inch symbol, which is quotation marks. So now I've got it. Great. Um, let's make it look white. There we go. So that's my crossbars, lines up. It looks like it hits the corners of my, my flag. Beautiful. Now, it's a stroke. I want to break it up and divide it and do things with it makes it hard. I, I could do things, I could do it other ways, but I'm going to show you the way I would do it. And this is very useful. I'm going to go up to object, I'm going to go to expand, and I'm, I'm going to turn my stroke into a fill. There's no fill, just a stroke. Okay, so now I have shapes that are fills without stroke. Now I'm going to break it up a bit more. I'm going to use the line tool. Uh, I'll do the line tool first, okay. So here we go. I'm going to get rid of that fill. Now, line tool, I'm going to go from corner to corner. I know I'll need this point. Uh, I'm not sure whether I got it right on that corner. I'm going to bring it up, intersection, intersect. And that should be the dead center of my of my flag. That'll be important. Now, the little border on here, see, 1 30th, and I know I've previously worked that out, it is 0.6 of an inch. So here's a tool we may not have used in class yet, or you may not have it to go with. It's called the offset. So an offset's gonna trace around something, either on the outside or the inside. I'm gonna show you how I would use it in this case. I'm going to select, not the line that I drew, but these two shapes that I expanded. I'm going to go Object, and I'm going to go to Path, and Offset Path. Now, I'll just preview this. I'll change that to an inch, and I'll preview. What it's done is it's traced around that shape one inch away. But I want to go 0.6 of an inch and I want to go inside. So I'm going to type in minus 0.6 and go preview. That gives me the perfect distance there. Okay. Now, I'm going to take the whole drawing I've done and I'm going to use a live fill. So uh, I'm going to press the shortcut K. I'm going to pick it up here just for now. It won't be the perfect red, but I'll change it in a minute. Okay, so just a color that is is fairly different than everything else on there. I could look. I'll do it in green. Okay, and then I'll change that green over. Now, I want to look at my flag again, so I don't get this wrong and have to change it. Now, I'm going to go like that. I know that this part will be covered up, so. Could go a bit further if I want. It swaps around to this side. So I'll bring it down here. So I've got that green, green. I'm going to come down here, here. So this one is there. It's giving me that long edge and short edge, and they're both stopping at the corners. And then I'm coming up here, and I might come down. Now, if I wanted to do, I think. Could do that maybe maybe that'd be useful for me I'll end up with a full shape okay so that was the live fill tool I could change yeah that'll that'll do me okay so I've got that now I'm going to select 
everything again because it... okay so here we go I've live filled that green the colors not that important at the moment because I'm going to change it over I'm going to come up here I'm going to select all my flag that I've done so far and I'm going to do expand I've got the stroke, the stroke, hang on a minute, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the stroke, make it transparent, I don't want a stroke on the flag. Now it's still selected, object, expand, uh, as I said there's no stroke, I'll leave object ticked and fill ticked and go OK. Now that's flattened, that live fill, if I moved an anchor point on a live fill it should flow into that area. But now it's 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 a shape. But because I've done that expand, it's going to be grouped. I'm going to ungroup it, and I need to do that twice. So here we go. Now, where the stroke was, you can see it's broken it into little parts. Okay. Now I'm going to show you a quick way to join them together. I've got that selected part, in the green. And I'm going to go select and I'm going to pick the same fill color. So everything I filled with that green is now selected. And one of our favorite tools, the Pathfinder, I'm going to bring that down, which I turned on Window Pathfinder. We're going to use this Unite. It's now one shape. And because I've got it as green, I can just go. I want that with the eyedropper to be red. Done. And I won't get rid of those parts now. Yeah, just selecting them, deleting them, I can drag a box around if I wanted. Okay. That's pretty good to start with. Now I've got these have been cut because I, I did a big trace, so I did a big expand. I've got lots of little white pieces in here. Now I could um, take those and merge them together, but what I might do is go select uh, same fill color. I don't really want those. I'm gonna go delete. So they're gone. Yeah, looks right. Okay, final step. I'm going to bring my line tool. I'm going to go from the center to the center, intersect. Intersect. Okay, so I've got two lines there. I'm going to shift and select them both. And uh, I'm going to expand them out. So this one was a bit thicker because this is the white. Uh, the red is going to be this thickness here and the white is going to add B and B is 1 15th which is 1.2 because it's double 1 30th so 1.2 so 2.4 plus 3.6 is 5. So I'm going to go 5 inches. And I'm going to make that white. Okay. Um, I could expand that too if I want. Maybe I'll do that. Take those. So I've selected those two lines. And... Um, I'm going to go object expand. Uh, I want the stroke. Okay. I might even blend it together. There we go. So it's united. <laughs> Do exactly the same thing, and I've got my flag. So line from intersection to intersection, line from intersection to intersection, which is the center. Uh, I'm going to select both of those so I held down shift and selected both of those I'm gonna make it 3.6 inches hit enter it's white so you can't see it 
and I'm going to pick that color. Oop. Three point six inches. Bank. And there you go. I've got my Union Jack last step. I'm going to take these two and I'm going to expand it and merge it. And I have my Union Jack. Voila. Done. Looks right. Looks good. Colors are accurate. Proportions are accurate. Thanks for watching and sorry about the cold.